Namaste. So I'm shooting this on the roof of the new temple and the view is just amazing. There's Mount Everest in the background. I mean, <laughs> it's just out of this world. But anyway, let's talk about the Srishti Kanda chapters two through four. And this is a perfect example of what I was talking about in the last Spiritual Insights video, how Shiva operates. And we'll see this again and again, not only in the Shiva Purana, but in our own lives. Because this is Shiva's way of teaching. He doesn't teach, well, I mean, he not only teaches through words and precepts, but he teaches by creating situations. You know, like the Zen masters. The Zen masters were expert at creating situations where you would learn some spiritual uh, lesson by experiencing it. So in the same way, in these three chapters, Narada is being taught a lesson. And in the first chapter, we see how Shiva sets him up uh, in chapter 2, this is the perfect setup. You know, he unknowingly performs austerity in a place that, uh, is, uh, that diminishes or, or completely annihilates Kama's power. Kama, Dave, of course, means lust. And so because this place was used by Shiva for his austerities, Narada is completely free from lust, but he doesn't know this. He thinks it's him. So he gets all puffed up <laughs> and he goes to Rudra and starts boasting about how, oh, now I conquered Kamadev, you know, but Rudra is cool. He's like, hey, you know, don't talk about this stuff openly. And, and this is a good point in general. It's a good idea not to boast or not to brag or even talk about one's spiritual realizations to others. Why? Because they become envious. And we see this time and time again. And uh, of course, I had a big lesson on this in my life when I had an ashram before and the devotees became envious of me. And in general, uh, the Vishnu devotees have always been envious of me. Hey, Shiva boy! <laughs> and uh, given me a lot of problems because I'm making advancement and they're not, basically. But anyway, Narada st starts boasting all over the place to Vishnu and even to his father, Brahma, that, oh, I performed austerities and conquered Kama, Dave, and all like this. So basically, you know, he's setting himself up. <laughs> but Shiva decides to teach him a lesson. So he just lets him rattle on and on about this, doesn't say anything, but even though Brahma and Vishnu both warn him, and even Rudra warns him not to boast, not to talk about this stuff. He does it anyway. So, okay, Vishnu says, I'm going to teach him a lesson. And by the advice of Shiva, he creates a whole Maya situation, a whole city full of people and a great king pious king whose daughter is holding her Svayambara ceremony. Svayambara is when 
all the suitors, all the princes usually, uh, come to the house of a king and then the daughter will pick one of them by putting a garland around his neck and then they get married. So in this case, Narada got all excited thinking, oh, I'm going to get this lady for my wife. Not remembering that just, you know, a little while ago, he was boasting to everybody how he was free from karma. Duh. <laughs> so poor Narda gets the, the whammy. <laughs> he gets the maya. And he forgets that he's a sannyasi. He forgets that he's a lifelong celibate. And uh, he goes to the Swayamvara, but Vishnu, acting on the advice of Shiva, throws Maya over him. And even though he was able to get Vishnu's bodily form, his face was that of a monkey. So just see how Shiva is operating here. He sets him up, then he goes to the Swayamvara, and of course, the lady takes one look at him and goes, yeah, yeah. <laughs> what a weirdo. And uh, then Vishnu comes in his original form, and she falls in love with him, and he whisks her away to Vaikuntha. <laughs> so, of course, Narada gets completely upset and angry, and then goes to Vishnu and curses him. Also, the two attendants of Rudra who were there at the Swayamvara, he cursed them too with the same curse that you will take birth as monkey-faced humans, right? And then he curses Vishnu that you will take birth and you will feel separation from a woman uh, and you will feel all the suffering that human beings do when they're bereft of love and all of this. So what is he doing? Shiva set up Narada to set up Vishnu to take birth as Rama. And of course, in the incarnation of Rama, uh, he gets married to Sita, and Sita gets kidnapped by Ravana, <laughs> and everybody gets taught a good lesson about attachment to the opposite sex. So this is Shiva's way of working. This is how he operates. This is what he does. And you can bet on it every time that you start to feel angry about something, you're being set up in the same way. Every time that you get upset and envious at somebody else, you can bet that it's Shiva getting ready to teach you a lesson. And usually the lesson has to do with attachment and how you should not be attached to these temporary things because they come and go. It's described in the Shastra that people come together and then they're forced to separate just like the bubbles of foam in the waves of the ocean. So basically, we're thrown together by chance, and then again, we have to separate and go apart. And we really have no control over it at all. It's simply due to karma. It's simply due to the results of our previous activities, and we don't know what those are. So there's no way that we can predict actually what's going to happen. Yes, astrology is good to a certain extent, it can give probabilities or uh, possibilities and show what could happen, what might happen, and the, the chances of it happening, but it can never really give exact predictions. So in the case of uh, a setup like this, sometimes Shiva will just use his devotees to create a situation to teach other devotees. And usually the lesson has to do with attachment and anger over expectations. 
Narada expected that, oh, I've got Vishnu's form, now this lady's going to fall for me and, and choose me as her husband. But it was Maya. It was all an illusion. And so our expectations are. Our ideas about the future, what's going to happen, or what we want to happen, are simply dreams. And like all dreams, they simply dissipate when we wake up. So in the case of Narada here, the wake-up call was <laughs> when the lady took one look at him and went, oh, <laughs> and went off and married Vishnu instead. So in our case, it's usually some kind of disappointment. And, you know, Saturn, Saturn and Ketu are the planets of loss, delay, disappointment, you know, uh, all those things that go to war on our expectations. And we think that something is good and something is right and something is beneficial when it matches our expectations. But what are our expectations? They're nothing but dreams. They're projections of the ego that we would like to have. That's all. And when things go in harmony with our expectations, we think, oh, this is good, this is right, this is the way it's supposed to be, isn't it? And when they don't, we suffer. But this suffering is completely self-inflicted. Just like Narada's situation in these three chapters was something he brought on himself, really. Right? But, of course, Shiva is very clever. And he's motivated to teach us, to help elevate us, and bring us to higher consciousness. So, the way that he resolves these situations involve lessons. And the lesson that Narada gets is wonderful. Basically, Vishnu, at the end of the third chapter, sorry, fourth chapter, summarizes the Vidyeshwara Sanghita of Vishnu Purana. And he tells Narada in just a few words how to be a perfect devotee of Shiva. And so this is worth listening to, um, even if you don't listen to any of the other episodes, <laughs> which you should, but it's worth listening to chapter four because of this talk, this wonderful lesson given by Vishnu, who is himself a great devotee of Shiva. So this is the view of Shiva Purana. Shiva Purana sees Shiva not only as the Supreme Lord, not only as uh, Nirguna Brahman and Saguna Brahman, but also as a friend, the father of the universe, who takes care of his children, who teaches them the lessons that they need to advance spiritually and stay out of trouble, and also gives them tools to experience bliss. And if you follow any of our advice here in this series, any of the lessons given in Shiva Purana, if you put any of them into practice, you'll soon discover that worshiping Shiva is bliss. Huh? So it's the best thing you can do for yourself. And the best thing you can do for others is to show a good example and also to repeat these narrations or uh, direct others to hear them by sharing on social media or by giving personal advice to people like you really want to get over your depression, you know, read or hear Shiva Purana and follow the instructions because this is really the path to highest enlightenment. Aung Tat Sat. Aung Shakti Aung. Aung Nam Shivaya. <laughs>